And good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Wolverine Studios Developer Dynasty for Draft Day Sports College Basketball. I welcome you to our weekly Tuesday night show talking about the uh, improvements and additions and everything else coming to uh, the 2021 version of this year's game. Uh, as always, uh, I offer uh, you the opportunity here in the, the chat to ask any questions uh, that you like, uh, suggest anything that you want to suggest for the game, and uh, in the meantime, I'm going to cover uh, some new things that we've been adding in this year, kind of recapping a couple of things, and then talking about some new uh, features with the uh, recruiting side of things, the latest additions there. Uh, as always, thank you to our follower list, which continues to grow every stream. I'm you know, so encouraged to see the, the follower list grow every single time I log on here. And thank you, of course, huge thanks to our subscribers who are supporting the channel, supporting our content that we're doing uh, three nights a week right now. So a uh, huge thank you to that. If you have uh, Amazon Prime and you link it to your Twitch account, you can have a free sub every month. And uh, certainly appreciate if you use that sub on our channel. I see GM Games Chris in the chat first. Uh, he beat me to it this week. So how's it going, Chris? Good to see you here. And uh, Gavin Malik 05 asks for a giveaway. Uh, no giveaway today, but you know we might do something on uh, on an upcoming stream or maybe uh, at the the release for first access when that hits. Maybe we'll do some kind of Twitch stream party and have a giveaway or something. That's kind of a fun idea. And uh, Breeze. Breeze 837, hello. Can't wait to see what's in store tonight. Good to see you as always, Breeze. So we're looking at the new dashboard here in the college basketball game with all these uh, the little player cards here. This is replacing just straight text that was in the game uh, last year. This is much much nicer thing to look at, I think. Um, you know, all kinds of information about who's you know on scholarship, who's redshirted, what their current attitude level is. Uh, who's a walk-on, stuff like that. Uh, we've also added the ability here to sort these cards by position or by last name, however you like to do that. And we've also added a button on this page where you can click it and go to the opponent dashboard. So you can kind of start checking in on you know your next opponent much easier now. You'll be able to, to pull up that just with one click, and then any page you go to after that will be uh, your opponent's page. Uh, GTNM30, good evening uh, to you. Thanks for joining us in the chat here. On the playing sim screen, there's some, some new features here as well. Uh, one thing you'll notice here at the top is the upcoming games for your team. It will list the next three upcoming opponents so that you know who you have coming up. There is also a game preview that we've added this year. You can click on that and pull up the... Uh, game preview, which will list the top players for each team at the you know at the major stat categories, and as well as your team versus team stats and an injury report. There's also a new way to choose the games that you want to simulate. This year, we've added this. Uh, we've changed the sim to date option. Instead of having to scroll forward to the date you want to sim, to you just uh, click this now and you'll select the day that you want. It'll tell you how many days out that is. And then once you've chosen the date, you just click and it'll take you right to the screen where you need to sim and it'll tell you, uh, you know, it will sim until the date that you've chosen. So a lot of uh, little improvements here on this screen just to, uh, to kind of make life a little bit easier for you. On the polls page, we've replaced RPI with net. Um, you know, that's, that is the, uh, the way things are in real life now. So, um, you know, we've replaced that with net and we'll, you know, show that off in a minute too. The, we've added kind of these bubbles here for the teams that are ranked so you can kind of see easier who's ranked. We've added the up and down in red and green so you can see the teams who are moving up. This was all just text before last year and I think that, um, I, I think that that will make this a little bit more attractive to have sort of these other colored features and stuff like that on here. It'll make it a little bit easier to look at this. Um, Chris asks, uh, double checking, but hoping this screen will have an HTML output. Um, yeah, I mean, we we should be able to output this to HTML if uh, if we want to, and we could do that with the bubble watch as well. 
uh, the bubble watch is not active right now in this league I have pulled up because it doesn't happen until February 1st, so I can't show that off right now. But uh, the uh, the bubble watch we could do, I, we could probably export the HBO. <laughs> I love this guy from Syracuse, Vince McMahon. <laughs> that's awesome. Totally random, of course, but uh, that's uh, that's funny. I just stumbled onto that now. Uh, what I do want to show off is uh, the net quadrant. So if, when you go to the Insights tab this year, uh, I've added a couple of things here with the, uh, the lineup tracking, expanded lineup tracking, four factors, the four factors, team versus team. Uh, if you don't know what the four factors are, uh, they're these stats. It's a, a money ball statistic thing for basketball um, that was developed by Dean Oliver quite some years ago. But uh, it's it's important and it's a it's a useful tool. But what I want to show off is the team sheet, and we, we talked about this briefly, so we won't spend a lot of time on this. But this is new. This is uh, showing the net quadrants, and each quadrant ranks um, a team based on the net ranking of that team. They'll fall into a certain quadrant, and it will tell you whether uh, you know whether it'll, it'll help determine whether those wins. Our losses are really helping you or really hurting you. So if you if you got wins in quadrant one, those are really good wins. You beat a high quality team, um, you know, either a, a team that was in the top thirty net that you won at home, top fifty net that you won in a neutral court, or a top seventy five uh, team that net that you beat on their court. Uh, quadrant two, quadrant three, obviously each win is less impressive. And if you have games that are in quadrant four and you're losing those games, those are going to be really bad losses because those are going to be the, the poorest teams in the association uh, record wise. So you do not want to have losses down there in quadrant four losses in quadrant one uh, aren't the end of the world. You know, it's uh, you lost to a good team, but uh, you, you definitely want to have the, you know, the wins as, as many wins as possible in these in these top quadrants, at least. Because that is what uh, goes into determining the the, the uh, teams chosen for the championship tournament. So obviously, the teams you know who win their conference tournaments get an automatic bid, but the at-large bids will f uh, factor heavily into you know the use of these quadrants going forward. So this is something completely new to the game, something that uh, you know everybody will I think have a lot of fun with getting used to and and taking a look at and keeping track of. Um, you know which wins they had were were really good ones, and which losses they wishes that they could have gone back and avoided. And uh, I agree with you, Coolish Jedi. Uh, bright future in another venture for Vince once he graduates. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's uh, one thing with the names, and especially in the college, I mean, we're having a lot of fun. If you don't know, uh, we're running an online league for uh, Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 2021 called the WSBA. Um, you can find out about that at draftdaysports.com slash WSBA. There's a lot of like fun names in that league that we're, you know, we're really enjoying. And I, it's, it's fun to see things like that here, just the random names that uh, get generated. And uh, yes, GTNM30 says it's absolutely. That's why we ditched the RPI setup, which was no longer used in real life. And this quadrant uh, reflects what is actually used. Uh, good old Kevin. Nice to see you in the chat. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, let's go on to recruiting because we have some, some big uh, new fun things there. Uh, good old Kevin asks, is First Access coming before February? Uh, the answer is no to that one. It will not be launched in January. We still got... Uh, Still, still got a bit of work to do on the 2D side. I haven't really uh, implemented all the changes I've wanted to there, and we're still, you know, still going deeper into recruiting. If you if you haven't been at the chats, um, you know, we've talked about this list, uh, the famous list now, which has grown to 240 or 50 uh, suggestions that were compiled from the community, and that shows you how fantastic the college basketball community is. You know, in, in our community that they are so passionate they came up with um, 250 suggestions that were worthwhile 
collecting and passing on to me. I'm sure there were a few that didn't make that list, but um, but that's really how good of a, a community, how you know, interested we have in, in, for these college basketball uh, games. And the, the mods that the, the community does are just fantastic, and they just get better and better every single year. So uh, new things on the recruiting side. The brand new recruiting card is ready to show off. And uh, we'll take a look at that right now. Uh, one important thing that I've added to the recruiting card here is the ability to take actions right from the card itself. Um, and we talked about last time on the stream that if you sort uh, the players here in a specific order, then when you go to the recruit cards, they will stay in that order. So it will uh, it will help you to you know you can have that you know sort it however you want, then come right in here, and you'll be able to take most of the actions through here. Uh, you'll still have to do the call and watch list stuff uh, from this main screen here, which I think is better. And don't forget, you can use hotkeys for the, if you don't want to click these buttons over here for call and watch list. Um, you can click this help screen if you need a, a reminder of what the hotkeys are, but C and W will add players to the call and watch list, or B will add them to both lists. So I think it's easier here maybe just um, just to rank the players how you want, whatever you're looking for. You know, if you need a big rebounder, you know, I'm going to rank by rebounding. And then you could just go down the list here, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and just keep clicking, you know, adding players to the call list that you want. Just because the, the call and watch list, you know, it's it's very minimal cost for the call. It's like five, I think it's five bucks uh, per recruiting week that it takes off for each call. And then, um, you know, you can do all that there. And then when you want to get more detailed, if you want to see more information about the player, you can get detailed here on the card. So on this, uh, this particular player, uh, you know, we've also added on the skill ratings. This is all changed. This is all new. The whole player card is is new um, to match the the player cards, you know, that we developed for Pro Basketball Twenty One. Um, in the skill ratings, I've added pluses and minuses for the grades to help differentiate players a little bit more. In the past, it would just be A, B, C, D, or F. Um, so right now, you're you're going to have A pluses, B minuses, uh, things like that. And I think that will help differentiate things a little bit more for you. In the top 10, this is also new, and we showed this off last stream, with the the hot, warm, or cool, or none tags for the top 10, so that you kind of understand who his favorite schools are and where you're ranking in those, and if you have a chance to, uh, to get somebody or not. And, of course, as you call players and, uh, you know, text them which is a new addition to that, to that we'll talk about um, you know you'll find out this recruit information and you can also find out information about their parents too that's always been in the game but it's it's a little bit uh, different now rather than displaying all at once you can just click back and forth and see which info you want um, I saw some things come through the chat box while I was busy talking so uh, let's go back and see what happened. Chris says uh, he likes the player card. Is this the player card that will show from a hyperlink on camp results email? Um, I don't know if I've linked it yet, but I will if I haven't. And yes, this is the recruit card that you will see anytime you pull up a recruits card. Uh, and is this possible to watch list or call list on the player card? I don't have anything on here on the player card for the watch or call list. Like I said, I, I think that was easier to to do all on the main screen and then kind of dig in here for the individual actions. Uh, and Random Task asks, is hot new? Hot is not new. Last year we had hot and cool, I think. Or was it warm and cool? I, I forget which one we had. But hot and warm, now there's a distinction uh, between those. So there's an extra level uh, you know, of a difference factor there. Uh, one new thing here as well is the text recruit option. So instead of calling the recruit on the phone, uh, you're going to have a text recruit option. It's going to be trying to get the same information, but just in uh, you know in text format. 
So it will tell you, and, and this is again something that wasn't available from the player card. You actually have to leave the screen and go back and do the phone. So this is, um, you know, th this is going to be a, a big time saver, I think, rather than clicking here to go to the phone and then choosing the recruits and then choosing, you know, who you wanted to talk to, which you can still do. Uh, you know, if you like doing it that way, now you'll have the option to do it right from the recruit cards itself. So you can just come in here and text the recruit. And you know, this one doesn't want to talk to me, so you know he doesn't. The the um, texting will use up the same phone time. So whether you're um, you know, whether you're making phone calls or texting the recruits, either way, you only get so much time each week to do it. So you can't just sit there and text every player and get all the information in a week. You only get so many uh, texts that you get to send. <laughs> and uh, GM Gr uh, Games Chris says the slide in their DMs. No DMs. No DMs. But you can text now. And again, here's an example of the hot, warm, and cool um, in, in this case, he has them in order. You will see sometimes that, you know, a, a, you know, a, a player may have the hot tag lower in the order. Um, the hot tag, the warm tag, or the cool tag is a reference to really how they feel about the recruiting effort that's been um, done to them. So, you know, if, if they have, they may have a hot tag on them but have them sixth on the list because that school has really put in a lot of effort. They've appreciated that effort. They're responsive to that effort, but that school's still not maybe their favorite school, you know? So they, w they do have an order of, you know, they really want to go to a certain school. And if that school comes in with, you know, a great recruiting effort, they'll probably get them. But if that school doesn't, sometimes they, you know, they may be appreciative of what other schools uh, are doing, but they're still holding on for a while, at least, to the uh, you know the hope that their their top school, their favorite choice, will come through for them. Uh, Chris asks, "Is parent influence being reduced or deferred? It's going to be behind the function." No, it's not. the The parent influence uh, still remains the same. Uh, useful, you know. Here, it's just it's a matter of you know, what you want to look at when you're on the card here. Um, there's only, obviously, so much space to put things here, so I had to, to kind of make it a, a toggle that you're looking for. Uh, you know, but but that's, uh, you know, that's what the purpose of it is. Obviously, the, the recruit info is the most important, and that's the one you need to focus on the most. But sometimes you'll find out um, about... Uh, like how influential the parents are, and if they are, you know, you know, it would re uh, represent you know a player who, you know, has, has parents that are, uh, you know, maybe con you know more controlling of him, and and they'll be making the decision. So you know, the the parental control here, when this bar gets really high, you'll know that you know you want to talk to, you know, you want to pitch the things that the parents are looking to hear more than the recruits looking to hear. But in most cases, it's the recruit that. Uh, you need to focus on and uh, and pay attention to. Uh, in terms of recruiting, we've also added the the call list tracker up here, so you know how many spots you have open on your call list. Uh, also, the option to clear your lists if you're done recruiting or um, you know you just don't want to call those guys anymore. You can just do the clear list, and it will clear out your watch and call lists for you. We've also added some new um, filters here like players who are not on your list, uh, players who are only likely eligible to get an SAT score high enough for your school, um, you know, things like that. So, you know, if you have ideas on things you want to see in those areas, by all means, you know, hit me up with them, throw them in the chat box here. Um, you know, I'll take down any anything that uh, people suggest. And if there's a filter that can make things, you know, easier for you to sort things on you know we'll do it also added in the actions here so you could tell players that are on the call and watch list if you see the phone and the binoculars icons that match the buttons over here for call and watch list you'll know that you've already added them to the call and watch list as well 
So I'm going to pull up a different league for the last few minutes of the stream. Uh, just because I want to talk about some of the fun things that have been there for a while, but I think that maybe people don't recognize. The game is really so deep that there's a lot to just um, kind of get lost in if you want to. One thing I like is the coaching tree. So the coaching tree allows you to select either by team or by a head coach. Um, and it will tell you, you know, the coaches who have uh, come from that that program. So I'm going to pull up Durham here. Uh, Durham here. Uh, it tells you who is currently the head coach, the first assistant coach, second assistant coach, third assistant coach. So these are the current coaches. Uh, it tells you Andre Farmer was a coach in the program, but he retired. And Desmond McDice was a coach in the program, and now he is the head coach at Northern Iowa. So if you click on him to pull up his card, you can look on his history, and he was the top assistant for Durham for two seasons, and then he got a head coaching job for Northern Iowa. So I think that uh, you know this is really a fun way of uh, looking at kind of your history here, uh, especially if it, once you've been a few seasons in and you have a history built up, and maybe you lose an assistant coach who gets poached by another school or something like that. You can always go back and see, you know, what happened to him and how he's doing and and things like that. I know people really get attached to their, you know, to their associations, um, you know, and I think that's really fun because the, the player, the coaches, the players, they become like, you know, a real world because there's so much to do here with them um, that I think it's fun to go back and look and see what happened to some of them. The pipeline progression, you know, this is something that we talked about two on a prior stream that has always confused people like what does the pipeline do what is how does it work um this is uh this is an explanation of it of what the pipeline does for recruiting it sticks with the coach it doesn't go by school it's by the coach um and it also tells you that he has to recruit 10 players from a single state in order to establish a recruiting pipeline um States that are in gray, he has none. Blue, it means he's on the way, and it will turn yellow once he's hit the uh, the 10 required to be part of that pipeline. So hopefully that kind of clears that up for some people as to what it does and how it works. Uh, the tournament screen is fun, too. Uh, let's show that off. Wayne is in the chat. Good to see you, Wayne. Uh, he said he was leading a seminar, and he'll check out the show later on replay. Uh, this shows all of the preseason tournaments, as well as the four postseason tournaments. If you mouse over them, you'll get a look at the trophy. And, of course, you can edit the trophies and stuff like that. And this will tell you who the last uh, champion of the tournament was. Give you all the defending champions and things like that. If you go and take a look at your school history, uh, you can always go through and see. Let's try to find a school that might have a little bit more distinguished history. You can go through and see if uh, they've won any of these tournaments. Uh, I know for a fact I saw Michigan on that list of tournaments won. So you can go through and see, yep, there's uh, they won the JAG Holiday Invitational Tournament in the 2022 season. So you can go through here and see all your old trophies and your trophy case. You can see if uh, any of your players have ever won any of the awards here, stuff like that. Uh, just, you know, uh, it's a really good way to get just deep into the history of your association. There's so much here between the school info, the history and the almanac pages. Uh, Chris asks, how do the bookings for these usually go down? Can a team lobby to be in one of them with the AD? Uh, it's just chosen by the game, largely. Uh, the season recaps on the history page shows you, uh, you know, the, the, every season that you've had, uh, your all-time wins and losses against every school, uh, you know, you can look at your your history of the players who have played for your school. 
there's you know there's just so much here uh players who are in blue obviously are no longer in the league but there is a uh a look back at what uh what their career was and anybody who has uh got the the link here you can click and pull up and check them out and obviously college basketball relies heavily on that fog of war type thing where you don't really know the ratings of uh players on other teams if, unless you played them or scouted them but uh but there is just tons and tons of history and detail and data in the game to uh to choose from and here you'll see on the team you're controlling uh, you'll get a look at those ratings as well as the proficiencies for offense and defense uh, as well as the new player type badges that were in pro basketball 21 they're also here in college basketball 21 uh, Rizzo also uh, checking in here to show his support thanks Rizzo for that he's also going to re-watch the replay here on Twitch I'm glad to see uh, see so much support for our streams you know again i always thank our followers and uh, the people who come into the stream especially those subscribers who uh you know have either used their free subscription or subscribed out of their own pocket just to show their appreciation for the content that we're doing uh each week and uh and with that that is going to just about wrap it up here as i just uh pull up a couple more things in the almanac uh, just to show you, I just you know love looking through some of these things once you get into a season, and just look at how much depth there is. Uh, you know, you you could spend hours just going through the history of your league, and it's uh, it's just it, it, there, there's just so much to do in the game. Uh, just it, it's you know as as we talked about you know recruiting almost being its own game in the game. You've got recruiting, you've got running your team in the season itself. And then you've got all this history that you can just go through and, and just get lost and immersed in, which uh, I think really makes it, you know, why you know one of our strongest, if not our strongest, title. And the the community behind it uh, certainly would suggest that. So thank you again to everybody for joining us uh, tonight on the stream, and uh, we will be back tomorrow night for the WSBA, the next uh, simulation stream. For that, if you're interested in that league or just want to stop by and say hello, uh, feel free to do that. We'll be here at 7.30 again tomorrow night. Uh, and if you're a college football fan, don't forget College Football 2021 has hit first access. So you can go to wolverinestudios.com right now and you can pre-order your copy of Draft Day Sports College Football 2021 and start playing with the latest beta uh, You know, right, right here and now. Check it out before it gets to its final release. And remember, if you pre-order, you not only get immediate access to the betas, but you can also get a discount and a complimentary Steam key when the game is available there. So thank you, everybody, for coming by tonight. And I will hope to see you, if not tomorrow night or Friday, if we uh, have a college football stream then. I hope to see you back here next Tuesday at 730 for the next episode of the Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2021 Developer Dynasty. Thanks, everybody, and have a great night.